Welcome to the Prairie Oaks Bible Study. And just want to spend a few minutes kind of getting you briefed up on what's going on at Prairie Oaks and attach it to why we're doing those things because of the scriptures. So this weekend we have a speaker from the Gideons International coming to speak to the congregation. And if you're not familiar with who the Gideons are, they are a group of lay people, uh, Christian men who and women who distribute Bibles, hard copies of the Bible, or uh, they have an app now because it's a digital age, but most famous for those hard copies of the Bible you would find in hotels, hospitals, places of incarceration, uh, middle schools hopefully, but in a lot of different places you'd see their little New Testaments or sometimes the full Bible. And in the front and back of those, you would find instructions for how to be saved and scripture verses for different uh, things that you might be worrying about or concerned about and struggling with. And so uh, valuable ministry and they, uh, the Prairie Grove uh, camp, they have come to our church to share uh, what's been going on and we've tried to give to their ministry for years. Now, what that brings to mind is why would we do that you know this is a ministry that they do a lot around here um, but a lot of the money is is also going overseas and they've seen a lot of profitable work of their ministry in other countries around the globe uh, where there is a hunger for the scriptures and so just because it seems like in this country there's a proliferation of Bibles but no appetite for the scriptures there's in other parts of the world that there is a tremendous appetite for scriptures but there is a lack of copies of the Bible and so they're trying to meet those needs and so that's one reason we have them come but also I think it helps us to to have a reminder of why it's important that we have our Bibles Christianity changed and, and flourished with the invention of the printing press. It changed in that it became more individualized as people could read the Bible for themselves and see if what they were hearing in the church matched the scriptures. And you can imagine that had tremendous importance as people wrestled with what God actually said, hearing from the Holy Spirit. And that goes into what we started doing on Wednesday nights. This is uh, last Wednesday. We started a new way of going through our Wednesday Bible study. We're finished with the book of Revelation, and we're moving into the Gospel of John, written by the same apostle. And what we're doing is we're going to use a unique Bible study method to enable us to maybe hear better from the Holy Spirit as he applies these verses uh, to our lives, to our hearts and our minds, and then share when we get together on Wednesday nights what God said Thursday through Tuesday. And so that method is known as SOAP, S-O-A-P. S for scriptures, where we, what does the verse say? You know, writing out the Bible verse is a great way to help reinforce and, and to really think through what is being said there. God told uh, through Moses that he wanted the kings of Israel to write out the scriptures for themselves and to carry it with them and to read from it every day. But that writing it out would move it from a very passive reading, skimming, you know how sometimes we don't really read what we read, to intaking it, putting it back onto paper, and reinforcing that. Now, that's the scripture part. The O is observations. Well, what stood out as you looked at those things? What seemed important? You know, the who, what, where, why, when, how, all that. But also, make sure we see, you know, well, why does this stand out? Maybe 
And this is all written down again, those observations. Maybe some questions to, to dive into later when we had a, a study Bible handy or something like that. But then to take those observations and say, so how does that apply to me? Are there promises that I should be claiming? Are there convictions that I need to repent? Commands I need to obey? Each of those things, we're looking to see what is God saying? Because God is also saying that to me. An example to follow. And so, I want you to look at that. Scriptures, the observation, the application. But if there's some things there that I see, promises to claim, commands to obey, convictions to repent of, examples to follow, then I need to pray about that with God. And so writing out those prayers. And that, again, kind of makes that a unique dynamic because it, it becomes less mumbling and more more clear, more permanent as it's written on those pages. And so I've been handing out little journals. You know, here's one that we're using on Wednesday nights. Uh, thanks, Stuart Estes from The Hedge at ABS at the University of Arkansas as gave us some uh, journals at church camp this last week. And so we were able to journal SOAP, if you can see that, S-O-A-P, on the sides there from Genesis. And we did some of that. And then I'm going to reuse this book for John. And so I'm going to be soaping through John. But it's something I'm familiar with because I've been working on my, for the last oh, a little over two months, I've been soaping through uh, my daily readings from Ecclesiastes is where I was when I started it. But just kind of each day as I read, uh, making those notes. And it doesn't happen each and every day, but I try to get it done. Um, because that record, again, the writing down helps reinforce those things. And I've been amazed God immediately reinforced the practicality of this method in speaking to me and then... When Stuart and I have times to visit, we often talk about what we've been soaping, or Tanner and I, or Tanner Stewart and I. Those have been helpful. And so we're going to be taking that dynamic to our church here on a Wednesday night and seeing what God does with that. Because our first night practicing was great. Loved it. But here's the thing. I made this statement Wednesday night. That, you know, with most things that you read, once you've read it once, you don't really want to read it again. Because most things that we read are not living and powerful. But that's how the Holy Spirit chose to describe the Word of God. Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4.12. If you want to look at that with me. For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. But when we read through the scriptures, we see new things. The Holy Spirit brings new new points to our, our mind, even in scriptures that we've read many a time. This last week, as we were going through Genesis, I've read Genesis numerous times, especially the first three chapters of Genesis. Such a foundational passage. But in reading it, I saw new things that I hadn't really thought about before and that really made an effort, you know, in how... Everything else was to reproduce its own kind. But that's not said of, of man and woman because they're made in the, in the likeness of God. That's what they're supposed to be duplicating. And due to the, the fall, due to sin, we don't do a very good job of it. But Christ empowered us to make disciples, to teach them everything that he taught us. And that he would be with us. And in so doing, then we're, 
once again commissioned to make disciples, make the image of God duplicated throughout this world, multiplied, preferably. And so this is our word of God. And it can do that because it's alive, because the Holy Spirit is alive. We can read it with dead minds and never get anything from it. But if we ask God to open our eyes that we might see the wondrous things from his law and confident faith that he is the living and powerful God who has spoken these words that will not go out void but will accomplish their purpose, he told the prophets, then how can we cleanse our way? But by taking heed according to his word that they would be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. This word of God, and it's sharp, even piercing to the soul and spirit to reveal not only God's thoughts to us, but oftentimes to reveal even our thoughts to us and God's thoughts about those thoughts. discerning book to make us discerning and wise because everything's open to him already but sin has blinded us and we need his help from his word and his holy spirit to help us see and the good news is is that we have a high priest to intercede for us in those weaknesses and so I'll finish up with that last few verses of Hebrews chapter 4. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need we have those times of need and we need reminders of that promise and it's a promise to claim that we have a high priest and what kind of high priest that he is able to sympathize with our weaknesses yet without sin the character of God to know and so it, a command come boldly and maybe some conviction. That I don't do a very good job of seeking after him and, and hungering for his word. It's easy for a day to get by without doing that. And so let us respond to God's word. If you'd like to know more about the SOAP method, I'll try to have some, some notes available on our website to, to see how to do that more. Uh, there's some really good resources if you just Google SOAP Bible study. Uh, if you want to know more about how to help the Gideons, such a good ministry, Gideons.org. Um, we'll help you get in touch with a local chapter uh, known as Camps and to see uh, how to help them in their mission to spread the word of God. Because it is the breathed out word of God. That we need to know. Thank you for joining us. God bless. We'll see you next time.